welcome to part three, final part of the Naomi Shiman um, lectures. Um, it's a little later, colder out. Um, <clears throat> this is my third lecture in one day, but it shouldn't be too long because there's just one thing to talk about really. The fourth and final aspect of um, feminist epistemology that Shiman gives is, it says, critically examine epistemic norms. Epistemic norms are uh, the things that we need to do in order to, to be rational. The norms are rules to follow. And so the, the general picture, continuation of what we've been saying, the general picture is that um, if you want to do your best job at getting an objective picture of what rationality requires, you have to keep one eye on the social identity of the theorist to make sure that they're if that's you, your um, sort of uh, biases don't creep into the theory. And yet it's inevitable to some extent that you're going to have that feature. So the best you can do is, is do your best to, uh, to deal with it, to keep an eye on it, and not basically that is, if you totally ignore it and pretend that you're being objective without taking anything into account that has to do with politics, then you're definitely not doing your due diligence. So uh, a socially responsible or um, feminist uh, theory of knowledge, um, Sheeman says it's not like we shouldn't do anything in the ballpark of what, like the Gettier program, <clears throat> finding necessary and sufficient conditions for knowledge. Uh, it's not like we that that's a pointless project. She thinks that that's still worth doing. Um, but while doing it, you need to take social factors into account. So what could that mean? Um, <clears throat> how could taking social identity or, or background politics have anything to do with like uh, understanding a theory of knowledge that overcomes the Gettier problem, that, that sort of generates a set of necessary and sufficient conditions on knowledge? <laughs> So this is the part where Sheeman's um, maybe Gettier case comes in. She says that the Gettier case actually, the idea of solving the Gettier problem is actually a good case study of how you're supposed to do this. Okay, so let's just review for a second what the Gettier cases are. What, what are they supposed to do? So you have this true justified belief account of knowledge. Um, you can go back to the Gettier video to check on all this stuff if it's uh, hard on a quick review. <clears throat> but so, um, the true justified belief kind of knowledge says that it's necessary and sufficient to satisfy these three things. You have a S knows that P, if and only if S believes that P, P is true, and S is justified in believing P. Um, and Gettier cases are cases where in which those three conditions are satisfied, but the person doesn't know anyway. So it's a counterexample to the claim that the JTB account is uh, sufficient for knowledge. So now, um, Sheeman sets up what I'm calling a maybe, get, maybe Gettier case. This is a Gettier case on certain background assumptions, and it's not a Gettier case on other background assumptions. And then the idea is that um, those background assumptions are political in nature, and so it matters what your political outlook is, whether or not you think it's a Gettier case. And this matters. The idea is if you want to give a theory of knowledge that accounts for all the Gettier cases, Whatever that condition is that, uh, by the way, accounting for the Gettier cases means adding a fourth condition to the JTB account that um, rules out the Gettier cases. In other words, that makes it so that um, those Gettier cases don't satisfy that fourth condition, and so they don't count as knowledge. And that would save the account. The idea is it would, failing to satisfy that fourth condition would explain why, uh, even though you have justified true belief, in the Gettier cases, you don't have that fourth thing, so it's not you haven't lived up to the full the full analysis of knowledge. That's why you don't have knowledge. So that fourth condition is whatever it is that needs to be added to JTB to make uh, the analysis complete. So again, the point of the maybe Gettier case is whether or not you count this case that she comes up with as an example of a Gettier case. That matters to you know formulating whatever that fourth condition is supposed to be that were possible to come up with a full analysis. So this is her case. You believe that the army has not released any radioactive dust into your town. 
<laughs> dust like I guess it's from you know uh, nuclear bomb testing or something like that they've collected up some radioactive dust maybe there's like a paranoid suspicion going around this rumor that the army is experimenting by sprinkling radioactive dust into towns to see if it's an effective weapon against civilian population some kind of paranoid uh, fear <clears throat> or is it paranoid that's this is the political issue <laughs> um, so you think that they, that they haven't released any dust or some some person thinks that, that that their town does not have any radioactive dust in it released by the army and in fact they don't so it's a true belief um, and their reason for believing it is that the government has said that the army is not doing this in response to the rumor the government came out and said no our military is not releasing any radioactive dust into any communities and you believe it on that on that grounds um, but unbeknownst to you um, the army is actually releasing uh, radioactive dust into various towns, just not yours. So even though <clears throat> you believe it on the basis of this justification, is it a justification that the government told you that they're not doing it? Um, okay, so now that's the setup. Is it a Gettier case? Remember, in order for it to count as a Gettier case, you have to be justified. So. It, if it's a Gettier case, that means that you are justified in believing what the government says about what the military is doing. So now let's take it back a step. You and I are having this conversation as epistemologists. I don't trust the government, what they say, and you do. Then you think it is a good case. It's a, get, it's a Gettier case because you think that the person in this, in this scenario described is justified because they believed what they did because they trust the government. I think that's a bad justification. I think this is just a case in which um, the person has an unjustified true, uh, true belief. That's not a Gettier case, you see. So the question of what, what amounts to justification is itself a political one, or at least it can turn on these political background assumptions. So which cases we take to be cases of justified belief or not are political in nature. and. Likewise, if you're interested in doing the Gettier program, you have to know something about justification to know which cases are Gettier cases. Um, and so if there can be political disagreement about what the stock of Gettier cases is, there's gonna be political disagreement about how to solve the Gettier problem or what the fourth condition of knowledge was, is gonna be. Um, so you can't, it's, it's sort of wrongheaded to think that you're gonna be able to do the Gettier program without doing politics. <laughs> In other words, or if on the other, another way of saying it is, if you're pursuing a solution to Gettier's puzzle, but you're not thinking about the way that political or social factors impact justification or conceptions of justification, um, then you're you're not doing a good job. <laughs> you're ignoring something that's relevant. Uh, so the the Shima's claim is that the feminist epistemologist is actually in a better position to to seriously address the Gettier kind of problem and that why is that such a big deal it's not quite so much of a focus now but in the, in the 90s like the Gettier program had been the thing that epistemologists were working on for a long time and it seemed to a lot of people like it had nothing to do with politics it was just this conceptual puzzle that was a priori necessary had nothing to do with any contingent features of um, you know social situation or anything so that's, that's all I have to say about that. The point of the Gettier case, the maybe Gettier case is, if it's a Gettier case, or if it's not, uh, turns on these background assumptions. And so it's a political issue. Even so something as abstract as the justified true belief account of knowledge and how to patch it up for the Gettier cases turns out to be um, politics are relevant. So just to tie it back into the the fourth thing, the fourth aspect of um, feminist epistemology that Sheeman's talking about, uh, be critical of epistemic norms. What counts as justification is going to be situated. I mean, what you see as a form of justification is partly a function, in some sense or other, of your um, social political identity factors. Okay, that's it for Sheeman, and um, next up will be um, the Louise Anthony uh, reply to this paper. I'm going to try to do all those lectures in one day tomorrow, and so in this week, one weekend, I'm going to do five or six lectures, and then that will be 
that will wrap it up for the semester and you'll have all the content that you need to finish the final exam and all that stuff. All right, see you.